join us. How are you? Hi, Ryan. Nice to see him. Join Thank us. you. There you go. Thank Thank you. Was, Thank did you enjoy that, ladies and gentlemen? Of course it is. <laughs> now, uh, you know, you've been singing for a few years now. Mm -hmm. Starting when? When did, when did you realise, I want to do this, I'm enjoying myself? Well, I always loved singing. I yeah. sang from a very early age, really, when I was a lot younger, 15, 16, 17. I did not have singing in uh, musicals in the town, Thurlis, Tipperary, where I came from. Yes. And I loved it. I really, really loved it and loved the feeling I had while I was singing. But then, you know, I got 17, finished school, went to London, started working, and it just all fell by the yeah. wayside. And Apart from... Pub, you know. The few jars and Party, give exactly, us a song yeah, and all the rest yeah, of yeah. it, know the feeling. But and then when I met Daniel. That changed everything kind of, as absolutely, well. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, now, you, you've been kind of doing your own thing here and there. You were involved with Dana, weren't you, on the All-Ireland Talent mm -hmm, Show? And mm -hmm. what was, was that an, an advisory role? Or what That's was right, yeah, yeah. I was one of her advisors, although, you know, the, as she says, the, the, she's the final judge with the final say. But, yes. Uh, yes, I like to think we give her a few tips. It was great fun. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Now, when you married Daniel, you know, obviously a big story and big news and, and hit the headlines and so forth, but I, I wouldn't mind asking you about, you were working in your parents' bar in Tenerife, isn't mm -hmm. that right? Yeah, yeah. And in walks Daniel through the door mm -hmm. and you look up from cleaning a glass or whatever. I've got it all in my Hollywood <laughs> head going. Huh? Yeah, I, not, not far from that. Was it? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was, did you yeah. think when you saw him coming through the door? Well, I didn't know he was coming up that night because he actually knew my parents before he knew me. Yes. And uh, I knew he was coming up that night anyway. Yes. And uh, he had a few friends with him in the bar. We didn't have any music in the bar and it was kind of <coughs> fairly quiet, okay. you know. And my mother said to me, you know, Daniel is here and there's nothing going on. You wouldn't ever sing a song, will you? So I said, oh, OK, then I'll sing a song. So I just sang, you know, music or anything, you know, yeah. I just sang a ballad. And uh, then we got chatting and the rest, as they say, is history. Was he a smooth operator? Yeah. Mm. Really? Yeah, very smooth. Good, yeah, good at, the, yeah, good yeah. at the, the, the chat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We hit it off straight away, actually. Did you? Yeah, what, yeah. what was it about yeah. him that, was, that you found so engaging? And... Um, just real honest, kind yeah. of nice person to talk to, you know, not... Uh, a bit flash or anything, real down to earth and just kind of, and I suppose I'm very chatty and he's quiet, so that's always, always nice for the is woman it, that's chatty. I was going to say, he's, he's a good listener. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly, yeah. yeah. And <laughs> yeah. I mean that obviously nicely. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the proposal for the, was a Christmas proposal, wasn't that's it? That's right, yeah, yeah, what, yeah. What happened? How did it work? Well, he um, asked me to go upstairs and phone my mum because at this time I was in Ireland yes. and uh, they were in Tenerife. Phone your mother and wish her a happy Christmas. And uh, I said, yeah, I'll do it later on, you know. Ah, no, go up now, go up now, you know. Quiet minute, go upstairs and go into a room. And I said, OK, then. And so he came up with me and I said, hi, Mom, happy Christmas. And he said, let me say hello to her. So he said, Marion, I have a, uh, a job to do now. I want to ask uh, your daughter to marry me. Okay. <laughs> so she started crying and I started crying and... <laughs> That was it. And had he picked out the ring and everything? Yeah, 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 he bought the and ring, did he, yeah. Does he have taste when it comes to jewellery? He did, yeah. Yes, yeah, you were happy with well. that? Yes, yeah. um, Now, you had, as we know, children, two children from a previous marriage, and mm. um, you, you had to bring Daniel into your life, and all that goes with that. Was, there, was that... I mean, I know Daniel's spoken very fondly of the kids before and all the rest of it, but was it difficult initially to mm. manoeuvre all of that? Well, absolutely, yeah. Um, I... Um, I sort of took my time before I introduced them to him because, you know, I'd never been with anybody since I'd had divorced my husband. Yes. And, uh, you know, I wanted them to kind of get used to him first. Um, and they got on brilliantly and they were kind of hoping that I would meet somebody because I'd been on my own for quite a while at that sure. stage. So they got on brilliantly. But what I found, you know, as I've got, as I've been married longer, the things that uh, I've noticed is that... Uh, you know, if they're, if they're being awkward, as we all know, teenagers can sure. be. And uh, I sometimes feel that I don't want to um, maybe tell Daniel that they're being awkward because I'd be afraid that he might, you know, dislike them or, you know, find that. Because I just thought you were children and he only met them when they were 10 and 12. It's very... Although they get on brilliantly, I'm the one with the kind of, you know, sometimes I yeah. think... You know, I, I don't want him to dislike them. I don't want to... And sometimes I find it very hard to like them. Yeah, yeah. You know, you well, know the way kids can really... Yeah, that's a very honest assessment of the situation yeah, that, that yeah. you give because, um, you know, people would just go, oh, no, it's, everything's great and it's fine. But in reality, it, it's complicated, like all relationships. Yeah, but as I say, probably more in my head, not yeah, in theirs at exactly. all. Exactly. You know? And I'm sure Daniel wouldn't like them any less if they were annoying you, but you're, you're just yeah. concerned for... 
Yeah, uh, for the, think... the, 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 the status quo and, yeah, and yeah. how that works. I mean, it's almost so much simpler, I think, when your, your, your partner is the father of your children, sure. but he, he's not, and, you know, they're mine, and I love him very much, and I love my children very much, mm. but they're... You know, that's their There's relationship. There's a difference thing yeah, there, exactly, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, of course, you have, uh, the, when, when you become Mrs. Daniel O'Donnell, um, you have to, you know, you kind of have to look your best. That I don't was know, very strange. Was it? Yeah, that was strange. Was there pressure to on you to, to look the business yeah, all the time? Yeah, I mean, I would be very much a, a kind of a tomboy and, um, uh, what will I say, leggings and jumpers. Casual and gear. Casual gear, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. And I found, you know, that I would go to places and... If somebody recognised me and I wasn't looking my best, I think, oh my God, they're probably going away thinking, is that Daniel Dunham's wife? Look at the state of her, you know. Oh. And I say, why didn't I put my makeup on or why didn't I do my yeah. hair? And I, you know, realised that you, know, you have to start looking like you are somebody's wife because now you can't just go into the supermarket and, you know. But I found it really hard to spend money because I had been divorced with two children. I'd watched every penny I had. I'd gone to the supermarket with so many pounds in my purse and a calculator to make sure I didn't go over it, you a lot know. Of people are doing that today, and yeah. Have to, yeah. Yeah, have to hand stuff back and be embarrassed, you know. So then when I suddenly got in, you know, we were married and he'd say, go out and buy an outfit. I'd still be going to the bargain reels and I'd still be, yeah. you know, I found it really hard to say, well, I'm going to spend 300 euros on a dress, you know. Yeah. And I, you know, I thought, oh, it'd be great if you had loads of money, you could just, but you actually have to grow. You have to learn to, to give up the old ways, you know. Or yeah. I still still love a bargain, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah, I know. Everyone loves a bargain today. Oh, yeah, it was strange. But, but there, I suppose, and then when you go to the shop, do you, do you get kind of, wait till I tell you and, uh, you know. Ah, uh, absolutely. Well, that's actually, <laughs> he keeps saying to me, I'll say, do you like this? Yeah. I say, guess how much it cost? And he said, why do you always ask me that? And I said, because I think it's fantastic and it only costs blah, blah, blah. And he yeah. said, will you stop? You know, worrying about that. But the thing is, when I buy something that's really expensive, I feel really, really guilty. I don't get the pleasure that I would. Mm. Like that, you've just explained a mystery for me as women, because every time I ask say someone that's really nice, they always go, five euro pennies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> five euro yeah. Pennies. it's like a pride. It's like, yes, yeah, they pride. love to touch yeah. Nice gloves, two euro in TK right. Maxx. Mm. <laughs> and even my mother says to me, stop telling people how much it costs. Yeah. My, I want to say, you too can have it. It's only, go down mm -hmm. to pennies and it's... Yes, yeah, the latest thing. You did, did you bring your husband with you? I think he's out the back there somewhere, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Would you please welcome Mr. Daniel O'Donnell. I'm not saying that you are doing this, but on occasion you have to, uh, and is it difficult, when it ever happens, to play second, second fiddle to your <laughs> wife? Well, I'm definitely second fiddle tonight. I'm the last out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, ha I have to say that um, all day she was really worried, as both of us were, because we both have flu. You're smothered. And we're dosing one another up with <laughs> different medications the last couple of days, so you did a a real good job singing and I will tell you that this morning she went down to Dundrum shopping centre and she was like the wreck of the hespis <laughs> now saying that she goes out with the makeup on she went out today and you wouldn't know her from the well, girl that's, that's, that's what I was hoping that's what I was hoping so, yeah. uh, so old <laughs> habits certainly die Dying. hard do you um, did you tell her that when she was going out the door no I just I give up on that. So. I knew it myself, but I felt so bad I didn't care. Yeah, so. well, why should you? Yeah, yeah. Um, do, do, does Magella ask for your advice when it comes to uh, music and, and all things career-wise? Well, I suppose we would rely on one another. You know, I would ask her about things and she would ask me about things if, if you know, she needed advice, I suppose, in songs. When she was recording her album, she just picked kind of like myself, picked songs that she really enjoyed to sing. Mm. And I think that's a, a, the secret of any, any singer. If you sing what you're enjoying, then it's easy to do it. Uh, but I think it's always nice to have one another to rely on because I know she understands music and she understands, you know, I suppose the, the concerns or fears that you would have performing, you know. It, you're always a bit nervous yeah, going out. To get it right. Uh, yeah. I really value his opinion, though, you know, when I, I sing something.